In the last lecture, we discussed about higher dimensional data in biology. For example, a microarray data or RNA seq data. And we discussed also the issue of analysis of such a higher dimensional data and visualization of that type of data. If you remember, at that time, we discussed that we have technique to reduce the dimension of a data before visualization or analysis. We also mentioned that one of the one of such techniques is principal component analysis or PCA. I hope you have seen that video. If not, please pause this one, this one and go back to that video because in this particular video, I will discuss about the logic and the mathematics behind PCA. And the subsequent one, I will show how you can use R functions to perform PCA on a data set. So, if you remember, what we want to do in dimension reduction is that we want to take a higher dimensional data, suppose which may have hundreds of dimension, and then we want to project it on lower dimension in such a way that we retain the relationship between the data, the trends and the pattern within the data largely intact. That is the goal of principal component analysis. Now, before I move into the logic and the math behind PCA, let us see what do I mean a projection of a data, right, and a reduction in dimension. So, what I have here as an example is a three-dimensional object, right. This is a, a 3D object, a rectangular cuboid, and it is resting in a 3D coordinate system x, y, and z. Now, it has the dimension equal to 3. I want to reduce the dimension. I want to make it dimension 3 to dimension 2. That means, I have to discard either x or y or z axis. So, suppose I discard z axis, then what do I get? If I have to still retain the information about this particular object in the x, y plane, what I can do? I can take a projection of that uh, object on the x, y plane. And if I do the projection of this object on x, y plane and discard z axis, I will get a simple rectangle. So, my previous data was a three dimensional object. Now, I have discarded one dimension that is the z axis and I have projected the object on two dimension. So, I have reduced the number of dimension and I have got what? I have got a projected data which looks like a rectangle. Now, you must have noticed one important thing what I have written here that whenever I uh, project from 3D to 2D, that means I am reducing the dimension, I am actually losing some information. Obviously, in this example, we have lost the information in this direction, right? We do not know, we lost the information about the width of that object. So, whenever you will do some sort of projection to reduce dimension of your data, there will be some sort of loss of information. So, that means, I have to judiciously reduce the dimension. So, I have to use a procedure by which I have least loss of information about my data set. So, let us take an example to understand what do I mean that uh, judicially uh, discarding one dimension, maintaining most of the information. A simple example, I have three data point, the two dimensional data, right? Data 1, uh, data point 1, 2 and 3. I want to convert this from 2D to 1D. One way of doing that is I can project these data on either on the x axis or on the y axis and then cancel one of the axis, right. So, how can I do that? If I project these three data, let us mark it as A, B and C on x axis, I will get this pink dot. Note one important thing, all these three data are now collapsed at one single data point that is this pink one. So, if I remove the y axis, just see this projected data, I will not be able to know that there are actually three data point because I will see only one data point, right, the pink one. Now, look what is happening if I discard x and project the data only on y. So, then what will happen? For each a, b, c, I will get a projected position a prime, b prime and c prime and they are distinctly different. So, even now, even if I discard a x axis, 
I will have only one axis y, so it is one dimensional data, but still I can I will be able to differentiate between three data points and I will know they are separated. So, as I said I have to judicially discard one dimensions. So, in this case I will not discard y, I will remove a x and project the data for a b c on y axis. So, I will do a data dimension reduction from two dimension to one dimension without losing much of the information. right? So, now let us look into it in a different perspective. In this example, I have kept the original axis and discarded one of the original. Uh, out of x and y dimension, I have removed the x uh, coordinate, right? x dimension. Now, if I do the same procedure, but not on the existing coordinates, rather I create new axis, new coordinate system completely. Let me give you an example to explain what do I mean by that. This is my data. I have six data point. This is two dimensional data. It is original coordinates are uh, x axis, horizontal one and the vertical one I named as y. Now, if you look into this data, you can see that along this direction, the data has a spread. So, what do I do? I create a coordinate axis along that direction, which di in, the, in the direction where I have the highest variation as dispersal in the data point. So, suppose I name that u1, this yellow line is that coordinate, right. So, in, along this coordinate, most of my, the, my data has the highest dispersal, you can easily visually see that. And I can actually do the projection of the data on this axis. So, these will be the projections, something like this. Now, if I forget about all other uh, original uh, coordinates that is y and x, then still if I project this data on this u1, I will still be able to differentiate between these six data points because they are separated, they are dispersed. And I have chosen that direction, the direction of u1 in such a way that the dispersion is maximum there. Now, if you carefully look into this data, you can still see there is some dispersal also in this direction. Now, that direction's dispersal, the variation of data in that direction is not captured by the projection along u1. So, what can I do? What I will do here, I will create another new axis, another new coordinate axis or dimension which will be orthogonal to this yellow one u1 and I will call that u2. So, that is what I have done. So, now I have two new axes u1 and u2 or rather you can say you, I have new two dimensions and I can now discard this x and y because if I project the data on this u1 and u2, they will be able to capture the difference between different data point. So, if I discard x and y, then I do not need to keep u1, uh, u1 and u2 like this, I can rotate it, right. So, that is what I have done here. I have rotated u1, u2, discarded x1, uh, x and y. So, now I have my data on a new coordinate system u1 versus u2. And these two coordinate captures the diversity, the dispersion of my data adequately. So, these two examples, so the first one where I have all data point uh, in, in where collapsing on x axis in one point, that is why I discarded x. And in this case, uh, where I have created completely two new coordinate, these two examples brings us to the essence of PCA, principal component analysis. What is that? So, PT, PCA is a dimension reduction technique where we are projecting our original higher dimensional data to a completely new coordinate system. We have new axis and these axes are orthogonal to each other. So, if I have a d dimensional data, 5 dimensional data, 6 dimensional data like that, then I can create this d number of new dimensions. Now, obviously, I will not choose all those d dimension, rather what I will do, I will pick few of those new dimension which can capture the most of the variation in the data. As I have written here, choose only a few of those new dimensions or axis that explains most of the variation in the data. 
that is the whole goal of principal component analysis. This is how we reduce the dimension of a data set. Now, let us put these words into mathematical equations and see how the mathematics of PCA works. So, I have a data set. This is a uh, represented by this X, uh, matrix A x and it is n into d matrix. Note carefully, I have d variables which are in this direction. So, the columns are variables in this x matrix, whereas I have n number of samples. So, samples are the rows, fine. So, this is my data matrix x and what I want to do? I want to create new coordinate, right? No new coordinate axis, new dimension. So, if I say have a, a coordinate something like this, x and y, the way we originally write, usually most of the time, you can always say that this x is actually a vector, isn't it? A vector, and y is also a vector. So, when I say I want to create a new axis or new dimension, essentially I'm looking for a new vector. What type of vector? I want a vector which will be a unit vector and let me call it u such that I want to project my data on that vector u and on projection the variance of the projected data will be maximum. Let me repeat, I want to get a new vector u and project my data x on that new vector such that this u vector that I have chosen is a unit vector and the variance of the projected data along this u vector is maximum. That is what I want to do mathematically in PCA. Now, in this formulation, there are two key points. One is the variance, the other one is projected data. So, let me explain both of them first before we go into details of further steps of PCA. What is projection of a data on a vector? That I will explain. Suppose in, the, in place of n by d matrix, I have a 2 by 2 matrix for x. So, I have uh, 2 samples, this 2 row and I have 2 variable x and y. So, I can show this, this is x axis, this is y axis and I have 2 samples. So, I have this is sample 1, this is sample 2, this pink points. Now, I have a unit vector. Right now, I do not know details of that, but imagine I have a unit vector u. This will be eventually my new coordinate axis, right? This is a blue colored arrow is a unit vector u and the yellow one uh, is the uh, span of that. So, I will project my data, these two data point on this vector u or on the span of this vector u. So, to do that, let me explain with the first uh, data point, this one, the first data point, this one, which is x1 and y1. That means, I want to get a projected data, this yellow point on the span of vector u. How can I get that? I want to project this data point 1 on this vector u, unit vector u. How can I get that? I hope you remember our, our lecture where we have discussed about vectors and also discussed about projection of a vector onto another vector. So, I can represent this data point, this first data point, this pink dot as a vector. That vector is x1, its component are x1 and y1. So, I want to project this x1 vector on this u and how can I do that? I know the formula. The projection of x1 on u will be given by the dot product between x1 and u, these two vector divided by the magnitude of u. Now, u is a unit vector that is how we have defined that has been the magnitude of un unit vector u is 1. So, what I get? I get x1 dot u dot product of x1, the data point vector and the unit vector. And what it will give me? 
it will give me the position of this projected point on this unit vector u and this length this is the position right this is the position from the 0 0 position so that is the p so that p i get by this formula of projection now let me imagine uh, uh, u is some value you have some value suppose u is uh, p and q arbitrarily i have taken so let me do this calculation dot product between u and x1 so i have to calculate the position of this projected uh, data data 1 that will be equal to the dot product between x1 and u x1 is this vector and u is this vector so if i do multiplication between these two vectors one is row vector another is column vector i get p1 x1 plus q y1 notice one important thing this p this p is now p1 p x1 plus q y1 right so that means the position on this span of this unit vector for this data point in the first data point includes the information of the original values for the data point see it includes the value of y1 and x1 so this position is a linear combination of the original data that is the essence one important issue in pca in pca when we project in new coordinate that position of the projected data retains the linear information linear combination of the original data right so pca is a sort of linear transformation so now i have explained this the projection of a data point on a unit vector using a 2 by 2 matrix but our data matrix is not 2 by 2 it's a quite big one n into d so this is my data matrix x this is suppose a unit vector whose dimension would should be d into 1 otherwise i cannot multiply now if i project this data x on u using the formula just we derived uh, last in last slide i will get the projection of x onto u will be multiplication of x and u and that should give me a column vector of dimension n into 1 n by 1 and each of these prime values are the projected value of my samples on that particular vector u or on that particular new coordinate so that is for projection of data as i said the other important issue in pca is the issue of variance for that we have to understand something called covariance matrix again i will take a 2 by 2 data matrix as an example so this is my data matrix i have two samples i have two variables variables are x and y i want to calculate the covariance of x remember x uh, here is a matrix we have done covariance and variance earlier for random variables but in those are scalar in this case x is a matrix using the same definition of variance and covariance if i have to calculate the covariance of x that is the we have to calculate the covariance matrix of x what i have to do first I have to center this data. What do I mean by centered data? See, you calculate the mean of each of these variables, the columns, right? So, suppose the mean is x bar and the, for the variable, second variable, it is y bar, y bar. So, then for the first column data, for x variable, subtract the mean of that column and the, for the second variable, the second column, subtract the mean of that column. So, I get a centered matrix xc, x underscore c and this is the formulation of that. So, now if I have to calculate the covariance of x, covariance of x, we can show that it will be, uh, it is a 2 by 2, I have two samples here. So, it will be 1 by 2 into the transpose of xc multiplied by xc. I have not gone into detail how we have reached there, but you can easily see it, but check it by linear algebra. And this multiplication will give me a matrix, 2 by 2 matrix, where the diagonal elements will be the variance of x and y, whereas the off diagonal element will be the covariance.
Again, this is for a two dimensional system, two by two data system, whereas my real data is n into d, but we can actually use the same rule logic formulation to calculate the covariance for that data matrix also. So, my data matrix x has n samples and d variables and you can show that the covariance matrix for x, which I will call now as capital S is equal to 1 by n because I have n sample into x transpose x. One important point here, this x here in this equation, in this equation are actually centered matrix, centered data. But I have not written the uh, subscript C because in general in PCA by default we are supposed to use centered data. So, we are supposed to start with the data itself which is centered. So, most of the literature in textbook we simply do not use the subscript C anymore to reduce the uh, uh, equation. So, what I have got? I have the covariant matrix x for x s equal to 1 by n into x transpose x. Now, let me go through some very crucial properties of this s covariance matrix which are useful in our PCA. The first one is that s will be a square matrix, it will be d by d because I have d variables in my data set and it will be a symmetric matrix that means s equal to s transpose. The third important point is that all eigenvalues, all eigenvalues of s are non-negative that means they can be 0 or positive and the fourth one all the eigenvectors of S are orthogonal. They, that means they are independent to linearly independent to each other. If you remember when I was discussing the essence of, the, of PCA, we say that we want a new coordinate system where the axis will be orthogonal or linearly independent to each other. So, connect the dot. What I am saying here is the eigenvectors of S will be orthogonal. We will come back to later on. Then there are few other important properties. If n is bigger than d, that means the number of sample is bigger than the dimension, the number of variable in the data, all and all columns of x are linearly independent. If these two properties are met, then all the eigenvalues, all the eigenvalues will be positive and as these eigenvalues are distinct, I will have d number of eigenvectors. So, if I have d number of variables, I will have d number of eigenvectors. But if n is not greater than d, it is less than d, when the number of sample is less than number of variables, in that case one important issue is there that at least one of the eigenvalues will be 0. Now, uh, that is enough uh, for the basic concept of variance, covariance and the projection of a data on a vector. Now, let me get back to what we were doing earlier, the mathematics of PCA. So, what is our purpose? What we are doing? I have n into d matrix x, which holds my data in sample d variables. I want to project the data x on a vector u such that the u is a unit vector and the variance of the projected data is maximum. That means, we want to maximize something, is not it? So, I can say this is an optimization problem and let me write it in the that form, in optimization problem form. So, x is given, u I do not know, I have to find the u. How I have to find the u? I have to find the u that will satisfy certain requirement. What is the requirement? So, if I project this data on u, the projected data will be x u and its variance will be variance of x u. So, I want to find a u, a unit vector in such a way that this variance of x u is maximum. So, I am formulating a optimization problem where the objective function is to maximize variance of x u by changing the uh, u, selecting a suitable u with a constraint that u must be a unit vector. 
the magnitude of u should be 1. Now, without going into details of the math, people have shown a very nice property. This variance of x u is actually equal to u transpose s u. I will write here variance of x u, u is a vector, is equal to u transpose, transpose of u vector s, s is the covariance matrix of the data x and u. So, I can reformulate my objective function. I have to find u such that u transpose s u is maximized with a constraint that u is a unit vector. You can approach this maximization problem from different perspective. We will not go in details of that derivation and math uh, mathematical derivation. Uh, I will say tell only that by using a common method called Lagrange multiplier, a very beautiful relations or beautiful solution comes out of it. The solution is very interesting. This is the solution. When you try to meet this objective function with this constraint, you reach this interesting solution. Pay attention to the solution. This is S, this S is covariance matrix of X, so this is a square matrix. U is a vector and this lambda is actually a scalar. Look at this relation, S into U equal to lambda into U. Can you recognize this relationship? You must have already done that, done that, right? You must have recognized it. Yes, you, this scalar quantity lambda is actually the eigenvalue of S. This is the eigenvalue, eigenvector definition. The square matrix into its eigenvector is equal to eigenvalue into the corresponding eigenvector. So, lambda is the eigenvalue of S, the covariance matrix of X and U is the eigenvector. Remember, we are searching the u. So, I have got the u. u is the eigenvector of the covariance matrix of the data that is S. So, let me uh, make the statement. I can say that the variance of the projected data would be maximum when the unit vector u is an eigenvector of the covariance matrix of the data. So, we have found the unit vector which I can use as a coordinate, a new coordinate on which I can project the data. If I project the data on this vector u, which is the unit vector and is the is a eigenvector of my covariance matrix for my data, then the variation, the variance of the data along this axis, along this vector will be maximum. Job done, but little bit still there that we have to sort out. Because if my system is n into d, then S the covariance matrix is d by d. That means, at max I can have d eigenvalue, distinct d eigenvalues and d eigenvectors. So, these eigenvectors we will call principal component. But remember our original goal, we are starting from d dimensional data, d is very large and I want to reduce the dimension. And now, I have got new coordinate. What are these new coordinate? These new coordinates will be called principal component and those are these eigenvectors. And how many eigenvectors I have? As it is a d by d matrix, I have d eigenvectors. So, I am starting with the data with d dimension n into d, n sample d variable. I am creating new vectors, new, new coordinates which are also d in number. So, where am I reducing the dimension? That means, I have to discard some of these d eigenvectors. I have to choose only those which will suffice for my work. How should I choose them? I okay. will go back to my main logic. I want to create new uh, coordinates, in this case actually vectors, because the vector will represent the direction of the coordinate axis, such that the variation of the data along those axes when projected is high, maximum, right? So, what I will do, I will look into those eigenvectors which will fulfill this criteria. And how can I do that? Okay, I have a beautiful relationship. The variance of the projected data on a particular eigenvector, suppose u, can be shown is equal to 
lambda, the corresponding eigenvalue. That is what I have written here. The variance of x into u is equal to the eigenvalue lambda. So, now I have d eigenvectors and corresponding d eigenvalues. So, arrange these eigenvalues from the highest to the lowest one, right. So, this is the largest one and this is the smallest one. So, if this is the largest one, that means the eigenvector u1 corresponding to this lambda 1 must be a vector on which if I project my data, the variance of the projected data will be highest. So, I will call that eigenvector u1 as my principal component. So, the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1, lambda 1 has the highest uh, value is u1 and I will call that u1 the principal component 1 because when the data is projected on u1, we will have the highest variance of that projected data. Now, once you have selected the first comp principal component, go to the second highest lambda, lambda 2 and the corresponding vector eigenvector is u2. So, if I project my data on this vector u2, so this is a new axis on u2, I will have the second highest variance. So, I will pick this vector also and I will call that second principal component pc2. So, in this way I can pick principal component 1, 3, 4 up to d, but remember I do not want to choose all these d vectors or d principal components. I want to truncate, remove most of them, I want to select a handful of them. How can I do that? That is also very simple. So, this is the order of eigenvalues, lambda 1 is the highest and lambda d is the lowest. So, these are the raw values, what I will do absolute values. So, what I will do? I will normalize them by the total eigenvalue, means the sum of all eigenvalues. So, that is what I have done here. I have summed all eigenvalues and divided lambda 1 by that. Obviously, this one will be still bigger than this one, but now these values are relative, right? So, they will vary from 0 to 1 and you can easily imagine actually this part, this relative value will represent fraction of total variation in data. So, I have calculated the relative eigenvalues which represent the fraction of total variation in the data. So, obviously, the uh, value, this relative value for eigenvector 1, that is the principal component 1, will have the highest value, but it still will be within 0 to 1. So, what I do now, I plot this data as a histogram. So, that is called a scree plot, in that I have all the principal component in the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis, I have this relative value of eigenvalue for each of these eigenvectors. And for example, in this graph, Imagine, suppose this value is uh, 0.6, so that means 60 percent of the variation in the data is captured by this eigenvector when I project the data on this eigenvector. Suppose this u2 is uh, 0.2 and this is 0.1, suppose this is 0.8 and so on. So, if I sum these three, I get 0.9. So, that means if I take only these three component, principal component or these three eigenvectors and project the data on these three vectors, I will be able to capture 0 0.9, that means 90 percent of the variation in my data. That is good enough. D may be initially to 200, from that I have got three new uh, uh, coordinate axes. Uh, which are called principal component 1, 2 and 3. If I project this 20 dimensional, 200 dimensional data on this uh, three, 3 dimension, I still retain the variation, 90 percent of the variability in the variation in the data, dispersal in the data, that is good enough for me. I have done a good job of reducing reduction of the dimension. So, what I will do? I will retain these 3 principal component and discard all others. 
In this case, I have shown 3, you may go up to 4, 5 or you may take the first 2, it depends upon the data set that you are analyzing. So, once you have selected a subset, right, from the first one, first principal component, second principal component up to mth principal component, because they actually uh, retain the most of the variation in the data, capture the most of the variation in the data, then what you have to do? You have to project your data on this principal component, because now these are the axes, right. So, you are projecting higher dimensional data on the dimension defined by these principal components. So, again projection is nothing but multiplication of the original data matrix with each of these vectors. So, rather than doing individual multiplication, what we usually do? We write individual these vectors, principal component 1, 2 and the mth principal component. I, we stack them side by side to create a matrix. So, what, what I will get? My original data which is a centered data by default is n into d matrix and I multiply that with d into m matrix because I have selected m first m principal components starting from 1 to m and each of these eigen vectors has d dimension d into 1, right. So, it is a d into m matrix and if I do the multiplication, I get the projected data and that dimension will be n into m because n is the number of sample, but now they have projected on m dimension. So, d is bigger than m. So, from d which is very large, I have come down to dimension m which is small, a handful value, 3, 4, 2 or something like that. So, this one is my m selected principal component, this is my projected data. There is some terminology in a PCA world, what we call? We call this matrix as the loading matrix and this projected data matrix we often call scores matrix. So, now what I have done? I have almost done the PCA. I have taken a d dimensional data with n sample n into d matrix x and then I project I have uh, identified the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix and I have selected the first few 1 to m eigen vectors which we call principal component now and I have projected my n into d data set into this m dimensional system, right. So, what do I get? I get this projected data as I showed in the last slide. Now, I want to visualize it suppose. So, let, let us explore this projected data matrix. Each of this column, they represent one principal component, is not it? So, the first column is principal component 1. So, if I project my data on this principal component, I will have the highest variation variance in that, right. And this is the second column is PC2 and the last one is PCM, right. And I want to project the data on only these two because I want to visualize it in two dimension. I want to visualize the projection of the uh, original data on these two dimension PC1, PC1 and PC2 and that is what I have done here. So, each of this row is a sample starting from first sample to the nth sample. So, this yellow box represent my ith sample. So, each all the samples are shown here in this plot where the horizontal axis is PC1 and the vertical axis is PC2. Each of these data point are actually one of the rows and this one for example, is sample i. So, its coordinate is this one, this one. So, this one is x i r 1 prime because it is a projected one x i 2 prime. So, in this way I can take a part of the projected data matrix and visualize it in two dimension. If you want to do it in three dimension, then take the P C 3. If you want to plot between P C 2 and P C 3, you take the P C 1 column and the P C 3 column and then plot it just like this scatter plot. That is all. In the upcoming lecture, we will learn how to use R to perform PC PCA and create this type of scatter plot for principal component 1 versus 2, principal component 2 versus principal component PC 3, something like that. So, let me jot down what we have learned in today's lecture. We in, in this lecture, we have learned the logic and the mathematics behind principal component analysis. In principal component analysis, what we are doing? We are projecting a higher dimensional data 
to a lower dimension while retaining the pattern or trend in the data set. Right? And we are projecting this data to new axis or dimensions. And we are doing in such a way that the projected data captures most of the variation within the data. One thing we have to remember that these new dimensions or new axes should be orthogonal that means linearly independent to each other and these axes are called principal components. Now how do you do it mathematically? To do it mathematically we find the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of the data and then these eigenvectors are principal components. So if I have d dimension then I have d eigenvectors, but I do not want to retain all those eigenvector or all those I principal component. I want to remove most of them and keep only a handful one. To do that, what we do? We order the eigenvectors based on their eigenvalues, because the eigenvalues are equal to the variance of the projected data on that particular eigenvector. So, we select first few eigenvector with high eigenvalues. For example, we choose the first vector which has the highest eigenvalue, then which is the choose the second eigenvector which has the second eigenvalue. So, these two are principal component 1 and principal component 2 and so on. And then we project the data on those selected eigenvectors or principal components. That is all for this lecture. Thank you for being today with me. See you in the next one.